Hello everyone. Today we are going to cover the first chapter as per the NCERT class 11 Python syllabus which is computer system. In this video, we will cover the fifth module of the chapter which is all about microprocessors. Other modules will be discussed in the subsequent videos. Let us now begin our discussion. A processor or CPU, which is implemented on a single microchip, is called microprocessor. Microprocessor is a small-sized electronic component inside a computer that carries out various tasks involved in data processing as well as arithmetic and logical operations. Microprocessors have evolved over time in terms of their increased processing capability, decreasing physical size, and reduced cost. Here, we can see the generations of microprocessor. The notable mentions here are the chip type, which is LSI in the first and second generation. This is followed by third and fourth generation, having VLSI. Finally, fifth generation has chip type SLSI. There are other aspects like memory size and examples to be considered. Please have a look at the table before proceeding. We will now talk about the microprocessor specifications. Microprocessors are classified on the basis of different features like word size, memory size, clock speed, and cores. Let us now look into each of these features in detail. Starting with the word size. Word size is the maximum number of bits that a microprocessor can process at a time. Earlier, a word was of 8 bits, as it was the maximum limit at that time. At present, the minimum word size is 16 bits, and maximum word size is 64 bits. Now talking about memory size. Depending upon the word size, the size of RAM varies. Initially, RAM was very small around 4 MB due to 4 or 8 bits word size. As word size increased to 64 bits, it has become feasible to use RAM of size up to 16 exabytes or EB. Next in our agenda is clock speed. Computers have an internal clock that generates pulses or signals at regular intervals of time. Clock speed simply means the number of pulses generated by the clock inside a computer. The clock speed indicates the speed at which the computer can execute instructions. Earlier, it was measured in hertz and kilohertz. But with advancement in technology and chip density, it is now measured in gigahertz, that is, billions of pulses. Moving on to core. Core is a basic computation unit of the CPU. Earlier processors had only one computation unit, thereby capable of performing only one task at a time. With the advent of multi-core processor, it has become possible for the computer to execute multiple tasks, thereby increasing the system's performance. CPU with 2, 4, and 8 cores is called dual-core, quad-core, and octa-core processor, respectively. Now we will talk about microcontrollers. The microcontroller is a small computing device, which has a CPU a fixed amount of RAM, ROM and other peripherals, all embedded on a single chip, as compared to microprocessor that has only a CPU on the chip. Keyboard, mouse, washing machine, digital camera, pen drive, remote controller, microwave are few examples of microcontrollers. As these are designed for specific tasks only, their size as well as cost is reduced. Because of the very small size of the microcontroller, it is embedded in another device or system to perform a specific functionality. Let us consider the example of a washing machine. The microcontroller in a fully automatic washing machine is used to control the washing cycle without any human intervention. The cycle starts with the filling of water, 
after which the clothes are soaked and washed. Thereafter the water is drained, and the clothes are spin dry. The simple use of microcontroller has permitted repetitive execution of tedious tasks automatically, without any human intervention, thereby saving precious time. Here, we can see the structure of a microcontroller. There is a clock, CPU, memory, input, output ports, and a bus system that connects it all. With this, we come to the end of the fifth module. More modules will be added in separate videos. Please let us know how we can improve the videos and what topics would be more helpful to you. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more NCERT computer science related content.